this show. This show, Talk Talk Philly G. And I'm your host, Philly G. Oh, okay. Philly G. <laughs> I am super stoked. Philly G! There you go. We got some energy going. Uh, I'm super stoked because today we got a very special guest. Her name is Virginia Watson. Yay for me! Where are you from? I am a native of Los Angeles, yes. California. What city? Where, where'd you grow up? Which city? Well, I think I started like right around Adams and Crenshaw in a Ooh. little cottage with my Adams mother. and Crenshaw. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Over there by Johnny's Pastrami. I'm, yeah. Across the street from yes. Johnny's Pastrami. And there were little cottages. Mm -hmm. They still exist there. But That's right. I was uh, in a little cottage. Yeah. And um, we started from there. And then we had some cousins, and my uncle had moved from, you know, after the war. Uh -huh. He was a chef in the army, and in World War, in Hiroshima, in, world, in the last part of World War II. Yeah. And he, um, he opened up his own place Restaurant. on Broadway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pool and mm -hmm. uh, burgers and yeah. fun stuff like that. But he looked like you. So when the when the riots came in '63, yes. right. he literally had to paint on his building "Soul Brother" because he certainly didn't look like one. Right, <laughs> right. I'll tell you what: if you go like Adams and Crenshaw right there, but you go down Adams, I guess it would be east towards USC. Uh huh. That's like uh, they had actually like a little Japan town. All those Japanese community right there. Oh yeah. Right. That's one of my fans calling right now. You have fans. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Talk Talk with Philly G, Season 2, Show 2. I'm your host, Philly G. And this is our guest, Jenny G. Yeah, Virginia <laughs> Watson, what's up? You're so lucky and thankful and honored to have you on our show today. Yay, Yay for me. Yay. Yay for us. Um, first of all, Season 2, we're back. Back welcome at it. Back. Yes, Thank welcome you everybody. Me. Thank you for watching. Um, so, if you don't know, Virginia Watson is Hollywood legacy royalty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess you so. You come from a royal, a know, Hollywood royalty family. But it musicians. wasn't. But it wasn't as popular to be a celebrity's kid as it is today. Yeah. Um, well, when I was a. You weren't kid, entitled. You mean? Yeah, not like that. <laughs> I mean, definitely entitled, but I mean. Not like Kanye and Kim Kardashian and what they do with their kids. Mm. You know, yes, I did go to Disneyland. What about the Brad Pitt kids? Brad oh, you Julian. mean Angelina? Yeah. The, well, are they in the same like it, Kanye's kids and and no. Brand, Brangelina's kids? Are they on the mm -hmm. same level? No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I didn't know. because I think that Angelina number one yeah. probably keeps them away from Brad too much. Okay, and they're not so. Brad has now become a guest in his children's lives. So wherever they are and he shows up, it's just going to be for a period of time and mm -hmm. then he's gone as opposed to him being able to get fair time with them like, you know, two, three weeks in okay, and now, then two, three weeks on the other side. Compare that to Kanye. Kanye gets to see his kids. Oh, I thought he they kicked him out. I thought he was like on the no, no fly list. Mm -mm, no, he's still very uh, close and he's probably He moved out here, right? He's living out here. Didn't he move out to the West Coast? Oh, he left out there in Wisconsin like or wherever he parked that big old house. Like that. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, he's living a different lifestyle now because he's not living a lifestyle with Kim and the kids anymore. So the family structure just kind of goes out the door for him. It doesn't go out the door for Kim because Kim's oh, still got yeah, the four okay. damn kids at home. You well, know, Kim's and kid. now Pete's dealing with him, so... Oh, boy. I mean, we don't even need to go down that road, do Pete's we? Pete's the luckiest motherfucker. Is I that what that is? Is that lucky? Is that what you call uh, he it? He must have some kind of je ne sais quoi we don't know nothing about. Yeah? I don't want to know. Yeah. I'm too old to care. Hollywood's whack right now. Well, at least we do know that there is a lack of respect amongst our fellow peers because... I don't know. I think that Chris Rock did a really good job of, you know, doing his job and getting it done. But Props um, Chris, I would yeah. have been looking for that little. Well, if you, if right you look in the still, like his, he he had a fist going, mm -hmm. and he restrained himself. He did. I mean, what's Will doing anyway? And they've known each other for a long time. What's he doing? And anyways? he knows how the show goes. 
Dialogue That's why he didn't think. Written. Here comes. And uh, did you hear what he said? What? When Will's like walking on the stage, you go, "Uh oh, here come King Richard." Right? Right. He didn't think he was going to get hit at that moment. You don't hit people. Like, who hits people? Well, first of all, it just looked pretty stupid when you've got so many African Americans running around today talking about yeah, I mean, black a lot lives not matter. There's a lot of layers. And this. then you've got the top of the food chain of the black lives. Yeah. And obviously they don't matter because it was black on black crime. It was <laughs> they did pathetic. Not, they did not represent the community well. Well, I know I took Miss Latanya's wig up a couple of more notches. Right. Latanya um, is married to our favorite Denzel Washington. Yeah. And oh no, yep. I take that back. The, I'm talking. Latanya's married to Sam Jackson. Her hair was up like Cru Cruella Deville. Yeah. And I don't know what they was. What was up with all that green? I was I was caught up like green is not a spring color. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, Jada, G.I. Jane looked like it, a caterpillar. <laughs> it's easy, yeah. Um, it's real easy to pile on. But there's two things that I made a comment in my little driving in L.A. Uh -huh. podcast that I do in my car. I said, two big organizations failed us and Chris Rock. The LAPD yeah. and the AMPAS. Yeah. The Oscars organization failed by not handling their business. Right, but they, and the they knew failed. he was going to win in two minutes. So. Well, and that ended up being obvious that, as well. Mm, they said so the some police, people are like, "Get him out of here now!" The and police like he can't leave. Witnessed an assault. Yeah, well, they, they did. They assault, so you know. Well, uh, now you're going down a different route. Okay. The police witnessed an assault, <laughs> and they did nothing. They they asked the victim, "Hey, do you want that guy that just slapped you upside your head in or out of here?" Not fair. Right? He's a victim. He doesn't even know what just happened. Right. He's traumatized in the moment. And you're like, do you want him in or out? Because if Chris says no, arrest him, and he's just about to get his Academy Award first one ever, then well, you know now he just put it on... No, I know, but they just put it on Chris to decide whether to ruin the whole show or not. And that's not fair. Chris didn't ask to be put in that position. So yeah. the Oscars organization, the AMPAS, they effed up. And then the police are just like, first of all, if I hit you, you don't get to decide whether I get arrested or not. The people of the state of California decide, i.e. the police, and then the prosecutors. It's not up to the victim to decide, because what happened when the, the, the brutal husband come and beat up his wife and everything, and then the police are going to ask the wife that just got battered, oh, do you want us to arrest him? No, what, what, what's she going to say? If she says yes, you're going to get her ass kicked ten more crying. times. So you don't ask the victim. It's not fair. And if I seem like I'm on a soapbox, yeah, I'm a lawyer. I work, you know, I do this shit. No, year. you're a lawyer too. You know I am. Child, you learned something. And they failed. Life. You failed, Oscars people. And then they banned him for 10 years. He didn't care. Well, I just think What that about that, 10 years? What's that? Um, so he can't be nominated. Well, thank God what they didn't take his mean? Oscars because... His Oscar because nobody else would have wanted that. You know that he won that Oscar that year. Nobody wants to take somebody else's Oscar home as a second place winner because a second place winner is a first place loser. But I but mean, here's the thing too that I have a problem with Jada about the whole G.I. Jane thing. First of all, G.I. Jane was one of the best movies right. that Demi Moore ever are. did, and it was mm. really good was outside good. of of a few uh, good men. Yeah, she did a really good job. And with, with that being said... Well, I mean, to me, where was it? a lot of good If things. you really had alopecia... Yeah. If you had alopecia, you would have holes in your head. So you have booty smooth plots in your head because the, you no more pores. The pores have closed. Oh, yeah. And there's no more hair to be able so to So you're saying even there. if she shaved so it, she we still would have seen like the leopard spots. Well, Vadis. Yes. And it was pretty. Mm. But I didn't see no alopecia. Where are you right now? I am in K-Town. We We're in K-Town at Argentum Studios. Yep, and it is so nice here. I, yeah. I really like the new place you This is like. our new um, studio. Yeah, it's our new studio. We, we record our auditions, we do podcasts, and we're going to do our game show. Yep, we got a game boom, show coming up. Boom, 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 boom. So we're boom, busy. Boom, 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 boom. boom.
So we got that going on. So you, I know. Uh, actually, Miss Watson came yeah. in, did audition, and there was like a contest audition. <laughs> Look at that face. Yeah. So she, she's she's battling against all these people to win this prize. And what happened? I won. She won. And then what happened? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, I got a plaque. Come on now. I got a really nice yeah. plaque. It says the American Black Film Festival. But what happened to that series, people? Yeah, so, so the prize to... was if you win, what's supposed to happen? I'm supposed to be on a series called West Philly Baby. And? And they have not started production yet. They haven't started and anything. I did this in November, just like when I bought my washer and dryer from Best Buy and didn't get it till two weeks ago. We went to the farmer's market, didn't we? Yeah, but we went to the tequila bar. Well, I wasn't, I mean, you'd straight, jump straight to that, but we went to the farmer's market and then we went to the Creole counter. The gumbo pot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was good. And he licked the bowl. Oh, it was good. But it is, it's really, really good. Really good. And the guy who actually owns the place now, I can remember when they first started the gumbo pot uh -huh. in the farmer's market. He was literally their um, their bus boy, mm. you know, busting the tables right. and getting everybody. So he worked his way literally up to ownership. To ownership, and he owns it. That's an American story. Yeah, but never leaves you nothing. So, I mean, it's just interesting to me, though, how, you know, the American dream works for people not from America. <laughs> so, look, y'all just met Virginia, and I told Chloe, like, he didn't even meet her. This is the first time meeting her. And I said, look, I love this lady. I love this man. You know what I mean? Because she got like information in there and she got life experiences that you will never have and neither will I. She lived more than one person's lifetime. I think so. I was trying to babysit too many grown folks when I was a kid. So. I mean, yeah, some of the things she shouldn't have had to live through. Some of the things she chose to live through. Everybody has some stuff that's like, yeah. that wasn't fun. But I, I mean, mommy let that happen. I know, but like when your parents are like rock stars back in the day, like oh, they dragging crazy. you around. And it's crazy. Actually, that's how whole. I was flying on the plane. I went back to Chicago, uh -huh. and I watched that Whitney. They did a the, like that, oh, that documentary, documentary on Whitney, and they were talking about you know her daughter and like Whitney just like dragged her around everywhere. You know, Bobby, and you know, exposed her to all those drugs, yeah, and so and then expect her not to want to be involved with drugs. That's so, I mean, it's only obvious because look at what happened. Yeah. Look I mean, you know, it, it, it's a tragedy. It's sad. It's and like, it wasn't, it never was Bobby. It was Bobby trying to stay with Whitney and with Bobby Christina and be married yeah. and try to keep her safe because she was already getting high before. I was like. He was a, he was a weed smoking, you know, kind of alcoholic type. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he, he he's kind of harmless, right? And then like. Whitney's up here and they're saying like because she's up here and he's down here like created all this stuff and then Whitney because of her trauma when she was young and the big reveal of this whole Whitney Houston thing I don't think I'm spoiling anything is that Dionne Warwick's sister be doing shit she was not supposed to do to these kids because Whitney's mom who was a singer also never right. made it to stardom like Whitney did was out on the road all the time so what'd she do she had to leave the kids with whomever well specifically the, uh... the Warwick's yeah, the Warwigs. And then Dion's sister was, was the not, nasty one. Yeah. And so that traumatized Whitney and her brothers. And then that created a lifelong, you know, uh, mental state where Whitney wasn't able to navigate clearly, you know, the, the waters. But that's that's I kind think of what she, I got from I it. think she, let, she knew what her choice was, but she couldn't do it and have Clive Davis be happy about it. Not at all. She's gonna say again. She couldn't do that. So I always, I, I, I was, I always felt whenever I was in her presence was that, you know, in actuality she was a, a lesbian, and that she was a right. repressed well, lesbian. But she also partner. loved her What's husband. What's the partner's name? Robin. 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 Now, do you met them? Did I you? never met Robin. I never did meet Robin, well, but I Whitney. met Whitney. And Bobby many times. People call me, me and my ex, they used to call us Whitney and Bobby. All right, so we're going to bring it back up to a light. We went kind of deep dive right there. Yep, it was and good, though. Yeah, I mean, I we could do like we could do this for three hours because yeah. I'm sure you got so many stories to tell. But I just want to say, coming back, that uh, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Thank I'm you for coming by. Um, thank you for 
being nice to Clovis. Hi, Clovis. Hey, we appreciate you. I mean, Clovis is, is cute, though, y'all. Don't get this it twisted. This is the Argentum family right here. You see what I'm saying? This is us. Yeah. I mean, this really is us. And uh, we'll I, bring some more friends along, though. Yeah, you can see some more. We we'll have some discussions you. about some fun uh, things that are happening yeah, in the world. I mean, topical. If it's topical, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. You know, can I tell it you? Happens. My parents got divorced <laughs> when I was one. What? Yeah. My parents were never married. I never had a mom dad household. Me neither. Yeah. So, well, I'll take that back. I had a stepfather who was Duke Ellington's brother, and he was an alcoholic. That was not any fun. She has stories. He wasn't any fun at all. Duke? I mean, he loved me. I loved I loved my Uncle Duke, and I loved it. Both their mom, their mom's name was, well, we called her Mama Lee. Mm. And, you know, it's interesting because I didn't realize that I was really connected to someone who really isn't from the United States of America that... At the time, it was called the British Islands or something like that. Yeah. British Honduras, I think is what oh. it was. And um, I never did get to meet Mama Lee because she died before we could ever make a trip there. Right. But my father, my stepfather, and my uh, Uncle Duke and my Uncle Daryl, they were three brothers. Right. Three brothers. But Duke was crazy too, but he wasn't as crazy. My father, my stepfather was an alcoholic. So he was one of those kind of mean alcoholics. Yeah. And those kind of hurt people. So the crazy thing is, like, a lot of the cultural references, the pop references that we make, the young kids, like my kid, they'll be like, what are you talking about, lady? <laughs> you no, saying all I've these things? They'll, be, they'll be like, she what are you talking so about, lady? so unconnected you to know what I'm saying? our world. They have no idea what we're talking about. This show is not for the youngsters so they tuned out a long time ago yeah or they might tune in because they need to know some they grown folk know. stuff yeah well so they can go we need grown. to educate them like get out of my house yeah. stop making me feed you and so just to wrap it up the, the the sentiment that we are sharing right now i mean it's street it's real and we bring that into the auditions and this is why Virginia and I really work well together is because I pull it out of her. I bring that out of you in the auditions and then people oh, look at you and then people look at her and they go, wow, she's, she's real. You know what I mean? A lot of people are trying to like hide that. Like, well, no, we're trying to act properly. We're trying to to no. And I'm like, no, right? I said, Be no, yourself. bring it, bring it. Because like, if you're an actor, you're doing an audition and you're trying to go right down the middle of the road. Please. Middle down the road and I'm going to get you up nowhere. for a snack. <laughs> that's middle not even going to get you a anything just what i like you have to step outside the box to yeah. some degree yes. but you have to know when and with whom you're dealing that should be sincere and 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 you know sometimes if it's the most important thing i believe about the acting experience overall is about being in the moment and actually knowing why you're in the moment and what your history is behind you and what your history is ahead of you and where you are right now in the moment with the future ahead of you and what has happened in the past. Mm. And you bring those two together, hope and survival, mm. and that stuff in between is supposed to be the good stuff. Yeah. That's the good stuff, because you can pull from this or you can pull from that. Yeah. And you know you don't have to wear them on your back. You just had to keep them in a trunk somewhere close by in case you need. Well, you have access. You need access to yeah. those feelings to be emoted. So I agree. That's what I would recommend. She said emoted. Emoted, yeah. Yeah. It happens. So I'd like to say on behalf of the Agenda family, on behalf of Clovis, on behalf of Philly G and Virginia, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Peace and love to everyone. And this is the end of episode two. Of. The Talk Talk with Philly G and Virginia W. G. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs>